Hi guys, well it's definitely a coffee day for me. It has been quite crazy and it's only Tuesday. Um, I actually thought that I would have to pull out a wig today. Yes, a wig. Um, last summer I had some serious issues with my hair um, just breaking off and I think it had to do with, you know, um, Tennessee, Colorado, Tennessee, Colorado, you know, finally my hair said, hey, wait a minute, you know, we need to get this right. So I think I pulled it off though, with a little bit of makeup and, you know, and straightening out my curls and so forth. So I went to the grocery store this morning and um, I needed some saline solution and there was toilet paper. And I was like, yay, you know, it's like Christmas and people were so excited that they had toilet paper. But as soon as they got the toilet paper, I looked in the faces of some of these people and there was just so much anxiety on there. And it started me thinking, okay, you know, I'm unprepared for this week. What am I gonna talk about? I know I started the um, Occupations of the Bible series last week. And um, honestly, I wanted to just talk a little bit about, yeah, one occupation, but talk a little bit about how we can be kinder, you know, in the world today. So, you know, when I got back home, uh, I started thinking about the situation that a lot of moms and dads are currently in right now um, with children um, coming home from college, um, parents being forced to work from home because of office conditions and, and, and you know, trying to keep everyone healthy. And, um, you know, and of course, schools being closed for the younger ones and so forth. So there's a lot of responsibility, more responsibility that parents currently have. They have to make sure that the children are at home, that they're fed, they're clothed, they have things to do. Um, and on top of that, they also have to make sure that the kids are quiet because, you know, a lot of, lot of parents are working from home now. So I started thinking about the, um, the stories of the innkeepers, right? I believe there are several that are mentioned in the Bible, uh, specifically in Genesis 42, 27, yeah, 43, 21, I believe, um, Exodus 4, 24. And then we look at Luke 2, 7 and Luke 10, um, I think it's 25 to 37. So in the old days, the inn was a passing place to rest for the night. It did not provide any food, towels, furniture, or a place to bathe. You know, people could basically get those things in uh, maybe a saloon or something next door. I don't know if they were called saloon, but a place next door that they could acquire these necessities. Um, it didn't have a landlord. It was just simply a structure um, and a place to lay your head as you're passing through a town. And in some areas of the Bible, I believe it depicts that the... Um, that the innkeepers were, were ruthless people. All they cared about was money. Um, so today that's very different as we know. Um, you know, as people who visit inns or bread and breakfast, you know, they normally do this for respite, for self-care, or to become more in tune with nature. Personally, I visit my bed and breakfast for all, for, for all of this plus the warm ginger peach muffins placed at my door each morning. Hey, I have my priorities, you know, I really do. In all seriousness though, as a profession, I myself have taken innkeeper classes for a later project that I'm currently involved with alongside a couple of friends and partners. There's actually a couple in Colorado, I think it's Southern Colorado, who teaches these classes. Um, I think they do it every every three months or something like that. And if you're in, interested in knowing know more about them, I can certainly uh, get you that information. So, um, but to stay in line with what's going on in the world right now, there are many moms and dads, like I said, who are led to become the innkeeper of their homes. Um, our lives have been disrupted. Um, but the optimist I try to be um, tells me that the, at this time, um, it offers great moments to become closer to our families, 
to appreciate the little things God gives us. I think it's also forcing us to go back to the beginning where we cooked our own foods, baked our own breads and played board games, um, expressed our feelings in written words, hug each other and say, I love you so much more. The most celebrated inn in the Bible is the one where Jesus was born. This was an inn of glory and new birth. It brought our Savior to the world, guys. The same Savior who compels us to know he comes to us just as the kind Samaritan who helped the man attacked by robbers on his trip from Jerusalem and Jericho. Please don't hold characteristics of the priests or the Levite right now who completely ignored the man who was attacked. Show kindness. Pay for someone's milk, eggs, or bread at your next visit to the store. If you can do more, that's awesome. I applaud you for that. Be a great innkeeper by taking care to make sure your neighbors are okay. Just be kind. Just be conscientious. Try to be holy. We know that this too shall pass. As we wait for this time, enjoy the moments with family. Catch up on a phone call with a friend. Stretch out the mental fatigue and chaos. God is watching us, you know. Let's try to make him proud. Now, if I can help you with spiritual counseling, please reach out. Info, are, I've provided info in the description below. Now, until I see you guys again, please leave me comments on how you are. Don't forget to subscribe, you know, and click that little bell to know when I upload another video. Guys, I'm holding the light of Jesus for all of us. Let's walk through this chaos with peace, love, and contentment. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.